you pumpkin. Good morning, pumpkin. How you doing, pumpkin? Looking pretty as always. Yes, you are. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. I was thinking it might be fun to do a look back at 2020. I don't know if you'll be able to hear what was just going on in the background, but those were my fish jumping and attacking the wood of my aquarium. When they get hungry, they jump out of the water and they bang up against the plastic lid to let me know they want food, which is cute. They're so smart. Also why there's always perpetually water stains on the front of this tank. Anyways, this has, that has nothing to do with fish. Nothing to do with plants, I mean. Hey, pumpkin. Let's go outside, look at the garden. Not that there's really all that much to look at right now. Things are looking pretty, pretty sad. By sad, I really just mean normal. This is what it's like out here in December, which is fine, because we're looking back how things were. Like I could spend a lot of time standing here talking about piles of mulch. And I could, y'all know I can talk, but that's not what we're doing here. Despite things being bare and brown and just kind of blech looking, there's always lots of relief from the evergreens, which is why I love this laurel hedge. It's usually where I always begun the garden tours. And this hedge performed very, very well this year. It only got planted up back in 2019, so I wasn't expecting to get much growth out of any of these shrubs, but you can see they did start to do their thing. That's all new growth. That's all what came out this year. Not a ton to throw back as far as old video goes, because they looked pretty much like this in all of the garden tours, but sometimes there were some flowers on them in the springtime. But below the hedge, that is where most of the action was with all of the different pedicets, the pedicets japonicus. There was the variegated variety, and then there's the gigantia variety, which I think has a new name now. I can't remember. Those did so well. And they were one of those plants where I was really happy with how they performed, but I also was like kind of in a place where it's like I could take them or leave them just because they ended up taking over so much space, which is, I mean, what they do. I just had never seen them do that before. I've been growing them for years in a different location and they never ever grew as aggressively. Well, I was very happy with them. It was also, like I said, it was one of those things where it's like, if those weren't there, I probably would have filled the area with some other things that maybe would look a little bit more tidy, but I don't know if I really wanted tidy anyways. And the pedicets are just awesome because in the spring they put up these fun little flowers like these flower sticks that come shooting up out of the ground and i think that those were in one of the garden tours if i'm correct pretty sure i had shown those in a garden maybe you're looking at them right now i don't know <laughs> the flowers on those looked really cool though even though this is a look back i'm also going to use it as an opportunity to show you what they look like when they're dormant look at this see this right here this like hard little ball in the ground that's what they look like in the winter time and it died back to these dormant little like cabbage like things, these alien-like balls. And they'll rest like that pretty much all winter, scattered throughout the berm. And this whole area over here, this a lot happened in this garden bed. It had that big magnolia tree that had to be removed because it was infected and infested, so had to pull that out and then basically kind of ended up with a blank canvas to work with out here for the rest of the summertime. The bananas down here on this end did wonderfully. All the bananas did fantastic this year. A fairly warm spring, so they started off kind of early and really just took off. And they did what bananas do. They just grew every single month, just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm trying to talk a little bit slowly so I can make sure they have the different shots up there of the bananas. You get it, they grew. It's gonna be the same thing when I get to the banana clump down here. Same thing, they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, you get it. This area was a lot of fun, actually. I didn't plant any of these things up. I had family do all the work for me because I was you know, recovering from my surgeries, but I laid everything out and had the area planned out and ready. Right now, things are you can see it's sort of on a layover waiting for another cold. I have these greenhouses over here because there's another cold snap coming up where I might need to cover those sable palms up a little bit. I was really happy to get these sable miners into the ground and then the needle palms that are in the background. But I was mostly excited about getting the ginger divisions over here because this area I think is going to look really cool in a few years with that nice tall tropical foliage and those big beautiful fragrant ginger flowers. And the plants stayed smaller this year, which is to be expected because they're just divisions. They kept flowering well into, uh, or well after I should say, <laughs> the last frost date, which was fantastic because that's kind of a guide as to how warm this corner stays and how well 
plants will do where I can kind of push them a little bit further and not just have to stick with zone six plants. I can probably easily get some zone seven. Well, I already have the gingers and the sable palms are really more for zone seven. I really enjoyed having the Alexander palm in the garden over here too. This is something fun and different. The magnolia tree would have been preferable, but like I said, that had to go. And it was especially nice being able to look out the window from the kitchen and see that palm tree every single morning. And in the afternoon, the light would kind of come through and there'd be some fun like palm frond shadows in the kitchen. That was a neat experience. Hey, and down here in this entryway, a whole, whole bunch of little things got planted, little things that got quite big. I was really happy to finally get the banana cannas put in on each side of the fence here. Those banana cannas, they have that nice, big, bold foliage that reminds me a lot of the Ensep morellii, the red obsidian bananas. It's not as <laughs> beautiful and attractive, but for something that dies back and will return every year, really just can't go wrong with it. Got planted later into the year, so wasn't expecting much out of them. They still got about six or seven feet tall, pardon the dog. And then on the other side of the fence, got all of those Colocasias plopped into the ground. Those also went in the ground kind of late, but they ended up, as the season went on and progressed, they got pretty big and really didn't seem to skip a beat from being planted like three months later than they probably should have been. Out of everything that got done out here this year, out of all the projects, I would say this bed right here, which looks beautiful right now, this has to be the area that stands out the most to me. This is one of the areas that I did get to get planted up before everything started happening this summer. I absolutely just loved how all of it came out. Love the contrast of the lemon coral sedums with the uh, tradescantias, those purple heart plants, and with the backdrop of the alternating orange and pink sun patients. Looked great from right when it was planted, when the plants were still really small, and it only took like a month, maybe two, for it to really start to fill out and put on a show. And the tradescantia, those purple heart plants, they ended up getting like kind of way too big for the spot. They needed a little bit more pruning. I probably should have stayed on top of that some more to let more light in for the lemon coral sedums, but overall it didn't matter. It just kept looking great. There's still one patch of lemon coral sedum here that's looking okay. I mean, it doesn't look great, but considering it got down to eight degrees just a few days ago, I'm kind of surprised because the rest of them they're not yet, the, there's nothing there. They did. Dormant, we'll see. They're hardy to zone seven, I'm in zone six. Maybe they'll come back? Eh, I don't know, it's hard to say. And then the last two standout things for me this year, as far as like my favorite planters go, were definitely the pool planters. Much to look at right now, but when those had the adenidia palms in them, they just, they glowed. I had really had a hard time trying to decide what direction I wanted to go with them because I was like, okay, I should just pick a few colors, alternate them, and then I just decided to just say, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna put every single <laughs> flower in here that I want to, uh, at least as far as those petunias were concerned. And it, that worked out wonderfully. Did that knowing that maybe some might choke out the others. It was gonna be kind of a survival of the fittest situation, but really they all did wonderfully with the exception of the purple wave petunias. By late summer, those kind of fizzled out and didn't see them in the planters as much. That rainbow of color that we got from all those different petunias just blew my mind because I really expected there to be a little bit more die off and for them to kind of compete with each other a little bit more than they did. But that wasn't really an issue. I thought that looked very very nice with the Cordelin fruticosa kiwis tucked in above them. Those, those did get, they didn't get smothered, but they did start to kind of disappear behind the petunias and the sun impatience that I put in these planters. I will probably be doing something very similar next year because I just, I loved how these, those came out. I thought they looked so cool, but I will not probably put impatience in the top. It just seemed unnecessary. There was already so much color and everything going on that it, it was just overkill. It didn't need them there. It was just extra annuals to suck the nutrients out of the soil and more to have to keep up with. I think that that would have been just fine without those. Amazing what a difference a few months makes. Oh, it was so sad out here, but that's just winter for you. You better get off that cover. What are you doing, buddy? Buddy? Get off that cover. Come on, get off there. You know better than that. And then the last planters that really stand out in my mind were the windmill palms. Those were some of my favorites also. I didn't get to see them that much because they're on my front porch, but I love the combination of the pink and orange double impatience that were in those pots. And then there were some hints of purple from some lobelia that ended up kind of frying when things got hot. I thought that might happen, but that was okay. Even just the impatience alone looked really great in those pots. And then they also had those, what, sweet potato vines in them, which I did rip out because they were just too big for those planters. There were a lot of projects this year, but still not quite as many as in years past. So there's not a 
a ton to go over and reflect on, which is okay. What did get done and what got planted, I think came out beautifully and I really enjoyed it. If I were to try and recap everything <laughs> from the garden tours from March all the way up until when did I stop? Like October, November, this video would be like three hours long. I mean, we don't need that. Nobody needs to see that. Like I said, I was really happy with how everything came out. Even the big planters I did over near the seating area with those Maui gold colocasias. I really, really loved those colocasias, but I think they were a little bit too big for that spot. It'd be pretty easy to work those elephant ears into the garden somewhere else where there's more room for them and it's a little bit more fitting. The only reason I even brought that up is because those were kind of some of the like standout plants for the year. There were only a few plants that really stick out in my head as being really big performers that I've really enjoyed this year. Those Maui Gold Colocasias, loved them. The Frog and a Blender Caladiums, always a favorite of mine. The variegation on their foliage, it's just ugh, it's so beautiful. Always makes me smile and makes me happy. And then the Bikini Teeny Colocasias, those, amazing. <laughs> Though a bit much, uh, almost invasive. If I lived a zone south and we had slightly warmer winters, I feel like those would just eat the garden alive because they already kind of do. It's worth it though. They look so cool. That's fine. That, that'll do it. <laughs> Lovely way to end the year. Just looking at all the ick in the mech. Nice fun little rundown of how things did this year. The things that stand out the most to me or stood out the most to me throughout the year in gardening and uh, things that I really look forward to working with again next year, especially this area, because those gingers, when they come back next year, they should be much, much, much bigger now that they had a year to go ahead and spread their roots down, or not even a year, but several months to get their roots down, uh, get those rhizomes nice and sturdy and be able to put on a much bigger show next year because they only got a few feet tall. Next year, they should be about six feet tall, maybe five feet tall. They should come up to just around the base of that window which is perfect because then looking through that window will just be the tops of those beautiful ginger flowers. I could talk about the garden all day. I'm going to wrap it up. It's very cold. I am extremely chilly. Hope y'all are doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What are some of the standout things from your gardens this year? Me your favorite plants that you worked with, annuals, perennials, any big changes you made to your garden? I would say for me this year, this area is probably the biggest change. Doesn't look great right now, but I mean, it's December, so what would you expect? Every year, be more and more projects. That's the fun thing about the garden. It's just a big canvas that's always changing. You keep rearranging it and having fun with it. And here I am still rambling on and on and on after just saying my hands are freezing cold. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. New Year's coming up here. Hope everybody's staying safe. I'm gonna have a good time. Hopefully bigger and better things for next year. All right, as always, and of the utmost importance to everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.